Many of the players in today's video will be known as Mafia hitmen rather than typical NHL players. From Paul Baxter, who had over 2,300 penalty minutes in the WHA and NHL combined, to Marty McSorley, who had more fights than points in his career. And of course, we will also be talking about Scott Stevens, who had numerous attempts at ending other players' careers. Here is the dirtiest player from all 32 NHL teams. While he wasn't widely recognized, Robertson proved to be a very formidable player with a very tenacious edge. Standing at a modest 5'1 and weighing just under 200 pounds, he defied his size to assert himself under the ice, sending a clear message to opposing teams. Robertson played for the Hartford Whalers in the 1983-84 season to the 1988-89 season. During his time on the Whalers, he consistently demonstrated his no-nonsense approach. Despite the lack of physical stature, Robertson only had less than 100 penalty minutes in two seasons. In other seasons, he amassed penalty minutes of 198, 337, 358, and 293 respectively. This impressive track record propelled him to be the Hartford Whalers and Carolina Hurricanes all-time leader in penalty minutes. Concluding his bruising 442-game NHL career, Robertson also recorded 49 goals, 99 assists, and a notable 1,751 penalty minutes. Torrey Robertson fearlessly stood up for his team, engaging in 24 fights as a member of the Hartford Whalers, with several of them against the Boston Bruins alone. While Scott Stevens was not primarily known for his fighting abilities, he stands out as one of the toughest and most intimidating players to ever lace up a pair of skates. As a shutdown defenseman and an overall leader in his role as team captain, Stevens accumulated 1,710 penalty minutes and engaged in 23 fights over 956 games played in New Jersey. Opponents were always aware of the 6'2", 215 pound blue liner and those who were caught with their heads down would always pay a price. Stevens was renowned for his brutal and dirty hits, with notable incidents involving Paul Correa and Eric Lindros, among many others during his 22 season career. Scott Stevens currently ranks 14th all-time in penalty minutes and stands as the fourth highest amongst Devils players. An honorable mention for the New Jersey Devils has to go to Randy McKay. McKay dropped the gloves an impressive 132 times during his tenure with the Devils, scoring 1,418 points. McKay ended his career with 1,730 31 penalty minutes, which nearly averaged to a two-minute minor every single game. When you compile only 28 points in a 445-game career, with just 10 of them being goals, it's clear that Tony Twist wasn't the most skilled hockey player of all time. I think that's safe to say. However, where Twist truly shined was when he played with his gloves off, embracing his role as an enforcer. During his first season with St. Louis in the 1989-90 season, Twist fought a whopping 12 times in just 28 games. Game. Twist would briefly leave St. Louis for Quebec, but he made a return in the 1994-95 season. He then added 9 more fights, which became an impressive 21 fights in his first 56 games with the Blue. That's a fight every 2.67 games. Despite not cracking the top 10 all-time in Blue's penalty minutes, Twist played the role of an enforcer with a sense of joy, bringing a bit of spice and attitude to the role that fans absolutely adored. Now you can't talk about the dirtiest players in NHL history without talking about Rob Ray. Rob Ray's sensational NHL career spans 900 games, with a remarkable 889 of those played in Buffalo. During the course of his tenure, Ray established himself as an undeniable goon. He somehow got 3,270 career penalty minutes, which is a feat that places him sixth on the NHL's all-time penalty minutes list. This man somehow got 300 penalty minutes in a single season, a feat that nobody has ever come close to touch. Not to mention, he didn't just do this once, but twice in his first two full seasons, with 350 and 354 penalty minutes respectively. Ray's dominance on the Sabres made the team a team to beat rather than a team to eat. His unparalleled 3,189 penalty minutes while in a Sabres uniform remains an enduring franchise record, likely to withstand the test of time. Put this achievement into perspective, the closest competitor, Mike Foligno, concluded his Buffalo career with 1,450 penalty minutes. What distinguishes Ray from his enforcer peers is not only his prowess on the ice, but also his quick reflexes and defensive instinct. In a memorable incident, Ray used his fist to shield his team when a Quebec Nordique fan intruded onto the ice and approached the bench. This was just some easy meat for Ray. George Peros, a former NHL player, made a significant impact during his 474 game career with five different teams, with a notable portion of his playing time spent in Anaheim. Between 06 and 2012, Peros played 300 
155 of his career games with the Ducks. Harris gained a reputation for never shying away from a fight, and his willingness to drop the gloves contributed to his lengthy career in the league. Over the course of his physical playing style, he had over 1,192 penalty minutes. 812 of those were earned in his time with Anaheim in just 355 games. This makes him second in all-time franchise history, only trailing the guy that slept with Connor Bedard's mom. I'm just kidding, but Corey Perry. Most of the penalty minutes that Perros attained was because of his role as an enforcer. He established himself as one of the toughest players in the league during his career. He is also one of the last true enforcers that the NHL will see. Bob Prober is widely recognized as one of the toughest and most intimidating figures to ever grace the NHL ice. His reputation extends beyond his prowess as a hockey player as he was notorious for his ability to drop the gloves and employ his hands in ways that extended beyond the realm of traditional hockey play. Prober left a trail of opponents bruised and bloodied. He often caused opponents to think twice before engaging with, just like most men do before they get married. While Probert made a name for himself as an enforcer with Detroit, he carried that reputation with him to Chicago. Playing for the Blackhawks between the 95-96 and the 2001-2002 seasons, he consistently maintained a tough and aggressive style of play. During this season, he only dipped below the 100 penalty minute mark in a season one, tallying 48 penalty minutes in 14 games in the 97-98 season. Prober currently holds the seventh position in Blackhawks history for penalty minutes, totaling 1,210 despite only playing there for seven years. This adds up to a staggering 3,300 career penalty minutes in 935 games. While Probert may not lead the Chicago Blackhawks in penalty minutes, he is undoubtedly regarded as the toughest and best fighter to have ever donned in the Blackhawks sweater. For more on Bob Probert, watch this video here. If there was ever an organization that really appreciated enforcer. It would have to be the Broad Street Bullies. The Philadelphia Flyers stand out as one of the toughest organizations in history, and David Schultz is the undeniable leader of that. Schultz played the enforcer role in an era where virtually every player could be considered tough as nails, but by today's standards, David was a beast. In just 535 NHL games with the Flyers, Kings, Penguins, and Sabres, he amassed an impressive 2,229 penalty minutes. Schultz fought his way to having 200 plus penalty minutes twice, 300 plus penalty minutes three times, and even broke the 400 penalty minute mark in the 1974-75 season despite only playing 297 games with the Flyers. Though not near the top 10 of all time, he holds the fifth position in their all-time penalty minutes ranking, with 1,386 occurred during his time as a Flyer. This attribute is almost entirely due to his love of fighting. Had Schultz have extended his career by another season or two, he may have ended up at top 10 of all-time penalty minute leaders. Jared Bull dedicated the better part of nine seasons as a sole true enforcer for the Blue Jacket, endearing himself to the fan base. Breaking the two-fight mark in each of his first four seasons with Columbus, he recorded 27, 24, 21, and 23 fights respectively. This resulted in an escalating penalty minutes for each season. 226, 180, 149, and 182. Bull rapidly ascended the ranks of the Columbus Blue Blue Jackets all-time leaders in penalty minutes, a position he currently holds first at with 1,195. He begun his career on a strong note, engaging in 27 fights in 75 games. Out of those 27 fights, he secured 9 wins, had 4 draws, and 14 losses. Over the following years, Bull improved his fighting record winning or drawing in 13 of his 24 fights in the subsequent season. In the 2009-2010 season, he further elevated his performance with wins or draws in 15 of his 21 fights and maintained a strong record in the 2010-2011 season with victories or draws in 13 of his 23 fights. While McCray never technically played in Dallas, he etched his name into the organization's history through his formidable presence on the ice before their relocation. Spending five impactful seasons with the Minnesota North Stars between the 1988-89 and 1991-92 seasons, McCray played in 323 games and engaged in an astonishing 117 fights. This means McCray dropped the gloves once every 2.76 games, showcasing an exceptionally frequent fighting style regardless of standards. In his inaugural season in 1988-89, McCray made an immediate impact, participating in 32 fights over 80 games. He fearlessly took on some of the era's most renowned fighters, including Chris Nealan, Dave Sanko, Tori Robertson, and Craig Barrow. 
Over examining his career stats, it becomes evident that McCray embraced a role centered around his physicality, or should you call it a goon. Over 576 NHL games, he scored 53 goals and contributed to 83 assists, which is pretty bad. But during this time, he also had a substantial 2,453 career penalty minutes with 1,567 of those earned with the Stars, placing him second in franchise history. Despite his sometimes overlooked status when discussing the best fighters, McCray stands out as the Stars' best enforcer they ever had, and really the most feared player in the team's history. If there's a man in this video who needs no introduction, it's none other than Mr. Hockey himself, Gordy Howe. The hat trick named after him involves getting a fight, an assist, and a goal. And while his stardom may not portray him as one of the meanest fighters of all time, he is widely regarded as one of the best, if not the best. There's no denying that there simply is no one tougher than Gordy Howe. Howe played an impressive 1,687 games for the Red Wings showcasing his toughness by dropping the gloves several times while also displaying an uncanny ability to score at will. In fact, he has scored a remarkable 786 goals for the Red Wings alone and 801 in his career, which has only been surpassed by Wayne Frickin' Gretzky and Alexander Ovechkin. Even with his fighting spirit, he maintained a high level of scoring. Howe's 1,643 penalty minutes add another dimension to his incredible career. Putting things into perspective, Howe is third in franchise penalty minutes, second in franchise assists, and holds, of course, the top spot in goals and total points, putting a 3-2-1 combo just like his hat trick. Gordie Howe is undeniably an elite talent that seamlessly blended the art of fighting with the ability to score. Few men in this video can boast such a quality, and is none set to the standards by Howe. He is unquestionably one of the most feared players to ever touch the ice. Ty Domi is arguably one of the most well-known enforcers of all time. To be in this video, Domi beats out an illustrious list of men that includes the names of Tiger Williams and Wendell Clark. Over the course of his 12th season and 777 games with the Leafs, he accumulated a mind-boggling. 2,265 penalty minutes. On top of being the Leafs all-time penalty minutes leader, he fought his way to the NHL's top three of all time in penalty minutes. Dolby finished his 1,020 game career with an astounding 3,515 penalty minutes, making him just one of nine men in the history of the league to break the 3,000 minute mark. If you're enjoying this video so far, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to ring that notification bell, Keith Kachuk, a prominent member of the Kachuk Hockey Legacy, established himself as a tough, gritty, and hardworking player during his playing days. Drafted 19th overall by the Winnipeg Jets in 1990, he played the first decade of his career with the organization, which later became the Phoenix and Arizona Coyotes. Patient as a tough guy was well earned, and he was known for his willingness to drop the gloves whenever it was necessary. While he may not often be considered the greatest all-time fighter, his intimidating presence made him a player to not be messed with. Throughout his tenure on the Coyotes, Kachuk showcased not only his toughness, but also his ability to contribute offensively. He finished his time with the organization with 1,158 penalty minutes, highlighting his physical style of play. He had three seasons where he exceeded the 200-minute mark for penalties, in the 92-93, 93-94, and 96-97 seasons. Kachuk's dangerous presence, whether it was with or without the puck, solidified his status as the most feared player in Arizona Coyotes history. Paul Laus will forever hold a special place in Florida Panthers history as the team's inaugural goon, and of course a fan favorite. He stood as an original member of the Panthers, spending his entire 530 game career in Florida. 
Lewis made his debut during the Panthers' inaugural season, quickly establishing himself as the team's tough guy. Always ready to drop the gloves and take on any opponent looking for a fight, Lewis became the fan favorite. From the outset, the then 23-year-old endeared himself to the fan. Throughout his career, Lewis accumulated 1,722 penalty minutes and engaged in 169 fights. Paul Lewis remained the original Panthers enforcer, rightfully earning the title as the most feared Panther in the team's history. Marty McSorley is arguably one of the most controversial and physical players to have ever played in the NHL. While he's undoubtedly somebody you want on your team, facing him was a different story, as opponents never dared to let their guard down. McSorley's ability to toe the line is what kept him employed as an NHL enforcer for an extended period. Although he was never considered an all-star, he was a dependable contributor during his time with the Kings and, of course, the Oilers era. McSorley tallied an impressive 234 points in 472 games played in LA. For a player often regarded as a goon, that is a noteworthy achievement. Despite this relative success, he was consistently labeled as an enforcer. McSorley had an addiction to engaging in fights with just terrifying opponents, including Chris Nyan, Tim Hunter, Clark Gillies, Mike Foligno, and Donald Brashear, among others. However, McSorley's career is significantly marked by an incident involving him and Donald Brashear. In a typical antagonistic move, McSorley targeted Brashear, who chose to ignore him. Unfortunately, this confrontation took a dark turn, with Smarty McSorley delivering a controversial stick hit to the side of Bashir's head from behind. This incident brought McSorley into the public spotlight, sparking debates among re reputable figures in sports and law about ethics in fighting and hockey. Throughout McSorley's 17-year NHL career, he engaged in a staggering 273 fights, leaving an undeniable mark in the league's history. While his NHL career was relatively short, at just 277 games, Derek Bogart earned a reputation as someone you do not want to mess with. Spending 255 of those games with the Wild, Bogart, while not the all-time leader in penalty minutes, had an unparalleled ability to drop the gloves and sent a clear message on the ice in Minnesota. Though we didn't have the longevity of others in this video, he managed to surpass the 100-minute mark for penalties in three of his five seasons finishing his wild career with an impressive 544 penalty minutes in just 255 games. Bogart engaged in 54 fights during his time in the wild. In his first season with Minnesota, he dropped the gloves 16 times, winning 9 of those fights. The only adversary who consistently got the better of him was the legendary George LaRoque. Bogart continued his impressive fighting trends through his short career, fighting 10 times in his second season and winning 8 of those scraps. While his overall totals may not match those of other players on this list, Derek Bogart undoubtedly won a remarkable number of times, making betting on him to win a fight a pretty safe choice. Now before diving into John Ferguson, there's a pretty valid argument that Chris Nyland deserves the title. But if you stick around, you'll see that Nyland is featured in this video later. John Ferguson is a name that should not be overlooked. While he may not have fought as frequently as Nyland, who dropped the gloves all the time, he did so with exceptional effectiveness. Considering Ferguson played what is arguably the toughest era of hockey, it adds even more reason to include him in this video. Throughout his 500 game career, all with the Montreal Canadiens, Ferguson amassed an impressive 1,240 penalty minutes, placing him fifth all time in Habs history. What sets Ferguson apart from many enforcers is his point production. Over his 500 career games in Montreal, he contributed 303 points, scoring 145 goals, providing 158 assists. This includes a 50 plus point season and three 40 plus point seasons. And notably, Ferguson never recorded fewer than 125 penalty minutes in a single season. When you consider all of these attributes together, it becomes increasingly clear that John Ferguson is indeed the best enforcer in Habs history. Now Calgary has seen his fair share of tough players on the ice, with Hunter undoubtedly 
ranking among the most formidable. While other names like Gary Roberts or Jim Heplinski or Zero Flurry brought grits, Hunter takes the cake. His physically imposing style of play and readiness to engage in fights were pivotal in amassing an impressive 2,450 penalty minutes during his tenure in Calgary, making him the all-time leader in Flames history. This total surpasses Gary Roberts by a significant margin, with 669 more minutes spent in the sin bin. Within those 2,450 minutes, Hunter had multiple seasons exceeding 200 and 300 penalty minutes. He broke the 200 minute mark six times and the 300 minute mark on three occasions, reaching a high of 375 minutes in 75 games in the 88-89 season. Enforcing was Hunter's specialty, as evidenced by finishing his 811 game career with the modest 62 goals and 76 assists. Notably, his career highs for goals and assists both achieved in the 84-85 season were 11 in 71 games accompanied by 259 penalty minutes. In total, Tim Hunter dropped the gloves 166 times as a Calgary Flame. While Stu Grimson's time with the Nashville Predators was limited to a single season, it remains the only real argument against his claim as the best fighter the team has ever had. Throughout his illustrious 729-game career, with only 30 of those spent with the Preds, Grimson earned a reputation as a fantastic fighter, renowned by the nickname the Grim Reaper. He was known to relish a pretty good fight. Over the course of his career, Grimson accumulated an impressive 2,113 penalty minutes. In his brief 30 games playing with the Nashville Predators, he fought eight times, showcasing his combative spirit. Grimson faced a star-studded lineup in those eight fights, taking on Craig Beru, Bob Probert, and George LaRock. While he was beaten by LaRock, Grimson did secure a victory in his single fight against Probert. Claiming a win against one of the best fighters in NHL history solidifies Grimson's place in this video as one of the most formidable enforcers in the league. Mick Fukoda played 573 games over his career, accumulating only 46 total points. With 271 penalty minutes, his on-ice role becomes clear. Fukoda Oda is a product of his era, thriving in the time of ice gladiators. In today's game, he would almost certainly never touch NHL ice, maybe not even AHL ice. However, in the era where physical hockey was paramount, he held down a pretty good job. An impressive aspect of Vukoda's resume is his accomplishment in the 88-89 season and 93-94 seasons, where he consistently broke the 200-minute mark for penalties. This helped him surpass the 2,000-minute mark, a feat achieved by only a handful of players. Many of these penalty minutes were a result of dropping the gloves as Vukoda engaged an astounding 124 fights during this period, including 31 fights in the 91-92 season. His career high of 293 penalty minutes that season showcased his willingness to take on reputable fighters like Tony Twist, Stu Grimson, Randy McKay, and Ty Domi. In an era where fighting played a major role in the game, Mick Vukoda thrived as an Islander, leaving no doubt that he was the most feared player on the ice. Joey Koser stands one of the toughest and meanest men of his generation, having played through one of the grittiest and hardest hitting eras of hockey and emerging victorious. While primarily associated with the Red Wings, Koso's tenacious and rugged play shone through his time in the Big Apple with the Rangers. Though he played only 273 games with the Rangers, he narrowly missed making their top 10 all-time for penalty minutes, tallying 537 penalty minutes just over 200 minutes short of Barry Beck. It's crucial to note that he played for 142 fewer games than Beck. While Kozer may not have engaged in fights as regularly as he did in Detroit, he didn't really need to with the Rangers. His reputation preceded him, and he only stepped into the ring when formidable opponents like Rob Ray came to town. Kozer proved to be intimidating when he needed to. He still had 40 scraps and 273 games as a Ranger, meaning he fought once in less than every seven games. While Dustin Bufflin may not be the first name that comes to mind when thinking of NHL enforcers, he is undoubtedly a formidable presence in that regard. His imposing frame, rank, long reach, and aggressive demeanor makes him an intimidating player to face. And what sets Bufflin apart is his proficiency in fighting, a skill that he doesn't need to deploy frequently because opponents often wisely choose to avoid confrontation. Bufflin is a unique and versatile
versatile asset for the Jets, standing at an impressive 6 foot 8 on skates and weighing over 270 pounds. Throughout his tenure, which spanned 869 games, Bufflin showcased his versatility by quarterbacking the power play, delivering ferocious body checks in open ice and extricating multiple players from scrums and occasionally dropping the gloves for 16 fights, accumulating a total of 194 penalty minutes. Chris Neal's remarkable resume speaks for itself. Neal sits atop the all-time list for penalty minutes in a senator sweater with 2,522, which is more than three times the total of the second closest player on the list, Chris Phillips with 758. While the competition for enforcers in the senator's history is thin, it's more of a testament to the effectiveness of Chris Neal's role rather than a lack of need for another enforcer. Throughout his 1,026 games in Ottawa, Chris Neal, like the majority of enforcers, spent his long career dropping the gloves and fearlessly fighting for his team. With only 112 goals and breaking the double-digit marks and points in just five occasions throughout his entire career, Neal was fortunate enough to play alongside massively talented players. His primary focus was to keep the team's skilled players safe from opposing enforcers, a job he half carried out over a decade. The name George LaRock is synonymous with hockey enforcers, particularly in a generation that relished dropping the gloves. LaRock stood at the forefront, earning lasting recognition for his effective role as an enforcer during his tenure in the NHL, particularly with the Oilers. Over his first eight seasons, totaling 490 games of his 695 game career, LaRock established himself as a prominent figure in the league. During his time in Edmonton, he surpassed the 20-point mark only once and broke the 100-penalty minute mark four occasions, narrowly missing it with 99 once as well. These penalty minutes were primarily accumulated through skirmishes with other enforcers. Throughout his Oilers career, he had 97 fights. While the Rock might not be top 10 in all-time games played for the Oilers, he comfortably sits in ninth for penalty minutes with 826. George was known for his unyielding approach. It didn't matter who you were or how tough you are, he was always ready to fight when the opportunity arose. This was evident in his willingness to take on formidable opponents like Stu Grimson, Pony Twist, Rob Ray, and Bob Probert, not just regularly, but often emerging victorious. His ability to consistently face and defeat some of the best of his generation is why he earned a fearsome reputation and is rightfully called the most feared player in Edmonton Oilers history. Averaging well over four minutes in penalties per game in Pittsburgh, all Baxter stands out as the toughest fighter in their history. His 409 penalty minutes in the 1981-82 season remains the franchise record for a single season. Though only 202 games were played with the Pens, Baxter dropped the gloves a total of 31 times. For the San Jose Sharks, Jeff Odgers broke the 200-minute mark for penalties in each of his first three NHL seasons, establishing himself as a formidable enforcer. After posting seasons of 217, 253, and 222 penalties, penalty minutes, he continued his aggressive play with seasons of 117, 192, concluding his 335 game tenure in San Jose. His 1,114 penalty minutes in San Jose stands as the most in all-time franchise history. In addition to accumulating a massive number of penalty minutes in his early career, Audrey's fought regularly, engaging in 65 fights in his first three seasons, a total of 95 through his career in San Jose. Audrey's unafraid of anyone filled the enforcer role exceptionally well. Over his 821 game career, playing with the Sharks, the Bruins, the Avs, and Atlanta Thrashers, he posted a total of 2,346 penalty minutes. Terry O'Reilly dedicated his entire 891 game career to the Boston Bruins, establishing himself as an iconic figure in the franchise's history. Renowned for his tenacity and fighting spirit, O'Reilly accumulated 2,095 penalty minutes over his career, securing the top spot in the Bruins record books. O'Reilly's enforcer role was highlighted by an impressive 11 seasons with 100 plus penalty minutes, and five of those seasons surpassed 
surpassed the 200 minute mark. Between 1997 and 1982, he recorded 200 or more penalty minutes for five consecutive seasons, showcasing his consistency as a tough guy. Despite being known for his role as an enforcer, O'Reilly's impact extended beyond the penalty box. He remains a remarkable and productive scorer, currently ranking 12th of all-time Boston Bruins history in points with 606 and he's 10th in assists with 442. This dual prowess as a both a prolific scorer and a Boston Bruins all-time enforcer cements Terry O'Reilly's legacy in the annals of NHL history. The Seattle Kraken are only in their third NHL season, playing in an era that has devalued enforcers, making this selection a bit tricky. However, we've chosen the top pairing defenseman Adam Larson. Larson has never shied away from physical play and stands as the franchise leader in hits with 449 and shot blocks with 361. While he differs from everyone else in this video, playing a completely different game in a completely different era, Larson's ability to make hits and sacrifice his body to block shots signifies him as a fearless and of course a tough leader. Larson ranks 9th in franchise points with 64 and leads the team on the ice, averaging 23 minutes and 3 seconds a game. He's a game changer for the Kraken, proving his impact every second he's on the ice. Before we get into the top picks of the video, leave a like and subscribe to our channel to catch our latest content. Enrico Ciccone played 374 games during his NHL career, which primarily was with the Tampa Bay Lightning, the only team he lasted more than 100 games with. Despite not having the longest career or the lengthiest stay in Florida, Ciccone is a notable candidate for the title of the most feared player in Lightning history. In his 135 games for the Lightning, he had 64 penalty minutes, ranking 6th in the franchise history. Throughout his relatively short career, he amassed an impressive 1,469 penalty minutes. Even though his time with the Tampa Bay Lightning was spread across multiple seasons, Ciccone adeptly filled the enforcer role during his tenure. Remarkably, he broke the 300 penalty minute mark in the 95-96 season with 306 in a box, playing with just 66 games. He also exceeded the 200 minute mark in three other seasons. He had 233 in the 96-97 season, 226 in the 93-94 season, and 225 in the 94-95 season. During his first two seasons with the Lightning, he engaged in 18 and 12 fights respectively in just 52 games played. In an effort to make his mark and solidify his reputation as a great fighter, Ciccone faced off against notable names like Randy McKay, Stu Grimson, Sil McRae, Tony Twist, and Mick Mukota. Basically, everyone else on this list. Tiger Williams holds the title of the NHL's all-time leader in penalty minutes, making his name synonymous with fighting in the sport of hockey. To put things into perspective, Williams is arguably the meanest and the toughest fighter in NHL history. He ranks second in all-time penalty minutes for the Toronto Maple Leafs, fifth all-time for the Vancouver Canucks, and just outside the top 10 for the LA Kings. Even though Williams is regularly associated with the Leafs, his time in the Pacific Northwest was no different. Playing in Vancouver from the 79-80 season until he departed for the Motor City during the 84-85 season, he participated in 312 games, accumulating a total of 1,324 penalty minutes. Notably, he had his second highest single season penalty minute total with 343 in 77 games played in the 80-81 season. What made Williams enforcing abilities the most impressive is that this wasn't his only dimension of the game. He went on to score 241 goals and had 272 assists to his name during his 962 NHL game career. As one of the most feared men of his time, Williams' ability to complement his enforcing game with a skill made him even more of a threat on the ice and a name to remember. Since the inception of the Golden Knights, the role of the enforcer has witnessed a decline in the game. However, the team has had two players, Keegan Colser, who's currently on the roster, and Ryan Reeves, who have established themselves as well-known tough guys in the league. This video will focus on Ryan Reeves, who quickly became a fan favorite in Las Vegas, not just an enforcer. Reeves has a dynamic personality and has evolved as more than an occasional offensive threat. Taking his role as an enforcer seriously, Reeves invested time in honing his skills 
stating, I spent two hard summers boxing, working on technique and the power of my punch. While it's challenging to replicate a hockey fight off the ice, training with a boxer allowed him to learn valuable techniques. Over the course of 844 NHL games, with a span of playing in the WHL to his current stint in the NHL, Reeves has scored 60 goals and 70 assists. Alongside his offensive contribution, he accumulated 1,377 penalty minutes. Known for his toughness, Reeves has engaged in over 150 fights throughout his career. In his four seasons with the Knights, Reeves dropped the gloves a total of 18 times, showcasing his commitment to the enforcer role in the modern day. Berube concluded his NHL career as one of the nine players in NHL history to surpass the 3,000 minute mark for penalties. His impressive career spans 1,154 games, accumulating a staggering 3,149 penalty minutes, with 1,220 of those crewed during his tenure in Washington. One of his most active seasons in terms of fighting was his inaugural season with the Capitals. In 1993-94, a Berube Rube engaged in 23 fights, amassing over 300 penalty minutes. Throughout the season, he faced off against multiple formidable opponents, including Ai Domi, Joe Koser, and Mike Vukoda, twice in the same game, and also Marty McSorley. Berube maintains this fighting prowess throughout his entire stay in Washington, swiftly ascending the ranks as one of the capital's best fighters all time. He achieved double-digit fighting totals in each of his first five seasons with the Washington Capitals totaling 73 fights and some of the most feared heavyweights in NHL history. While Cody McLeod may not be a household name for many non-Avalanche fans, he unquestionably deserves recognition in this video. To be considered among the best, frequent and successful fighting is a prerequisite, and McLeod has consistently met that criteria with the Colorado Avalanche. In the 2016-2017 season alone, McLeod engaged in eight fights in the middle of January, emerging victorious and six of them. His only loss came against Matt Martin. Beyond his regular forays into dropping the gloves, McLeod has amassed an impressive total of penalty minutes. Throughout his 710 game career, it reflects on the commendable outcome of his grappling efforts spanning his entire career. Over 659 games played with the Avs, he tailed 1,359 penalty minutes and engaged in 129 fights. For more NHL content, click the video on the screen to watch the most hated players and all 32 NHL teams. But before you do, leave a like, subscribe, and let us know in a comment what was the dirtiest thing an NHL player ever did.